right, yeah, not Stellante, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, it was the weed from earlier. <laughs> we were talking about Bud, right? Oh, wait, no, that was beer, sorry. <laughs> Give it Christian and Xavier, come on, people! Sorry about that. Do we have any other Latinos in the house tonight? Woo! All right, well, that's great. Well, we're back in the kitchen. Sounds good. Right. And some busting some tables. All right. Uh, do we have any non-Mexican Latinos in the house? You got a couple rules. All right. Welcome to Southern California. You know your tourists. Because uh, in Southern California, if you are Latino, you are Mexican, born and raised. If you're in New York, we all know Puerto Rican. If you're in Miami, Florida, we all know you are a wonderful swimmer. <laughs> I know where your minds were at. Let's not be racist now. I will say this, though. I do get confused for other ethnic backgrounds on a regular basis. I was in Pacific Beach one time, for example, and uh, this, this beautiful woman came up and said, what part of the Middle East are you from? <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> she had the nerve to tell me I was wrong. Like, really? Wow. That's not even the worst situation. The worst situation that happened to me as far as ethnic confusion. Uh, I was having lunch with a friend of mine and his uh, very intelligent girlfriend. And uh, in conversation, I mentioned something along the lines of, uh, oh, temple this, temple that. She turns to me and asks, are you Jewish? I ask her one question. What's my name? Christian? <laughs> ask me again. Christian, are you Jewish? <laughs> Six months later, same configuration, the three of us, I say configuration because I'm an engineer, weird like that. Uh, so it's my friend, his girlfriend, I don't know why he was still with her, and me, we were having lunch, I mentioned mass, and she's like, you're not Jewish! Really? Six months? Rachel Goldberg, it took you six months to figure out what kind of Christian was. Yeah, she wasn't the brightest person. But it's all good though. We moved on, and I believe since then she has gotten an iPhone and she can look things up real quick. Uh, do we have anybody who likes iPhones in the house? Woo! That was enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so with the iPhone situation that I came across, I was having a conversation with my friend, and uh, she was insistent on pre, on pre purchasing or pre ordering the iPhone 4. Uh, new body style was going to be sexy, she wanted a white one. I was like, well, it's not available, just get the black one. I was like, no, I need to have the white one. And it dawned on me, if it's the black iPhone, we just can't get insurance. <laughs> but being an actress, she needed to get to her appointments on time, so the white iPhone would help her out there. Crazy. <laughs> But there's a few differences I, I, I noticed between the black and white iPhones in addition to that. Like the, uh, the ringtones, for example. It's like you get the white iPhone, you go to the, uh, the iTunes store, uh, whatever that thing is called, and, uh, and you, can, uh, you can buy an, uh, a ringtone for like a dollar or something like that. The black iPhone, it's always a 50 cent ringtone for some reason. It's confusing. And the stuff that they come up with is like classical music from white iPhone, a little bit of Beethoven, the Valdi. And the black iPhone is like, you down with at t Yeah, you know me. It's not bad. I will say this, though. I was, uh, I was walking by Home Depot. Not because I'm Latino. <laughs> I was walking by Home Depot, but I came across a weird object. Uh, a brown iPhone. Obviously illegal, because Apple only makes black and white iPhones. So let's not go crazy there. Uh, I picked it up, and I started to use it a little bit. Scrolling through, it had 15 apps I didn't want. But it's okay because the government ended up paying for those. <laughs> uh, but with those apps, though, I realized there was a couple of map apps. I was like, cool, I'm going to go visit a friend of mine in Texas. So I put in the address, and Arizona wasn't on the map. <laughs> the brown iPhone isn't allowed in Arizona, people. <laughs> I had no idea. So uh, I, it was a defective phone. Uh, so I, I decided, being right there at Home Depot, I need to get rid of it. So I took it right back over the fence section of Home Depot, just to get rid of it. If you guys didn't realize, that is a order reference. <laughs> yeah, I got no laughs there. Thank you for the pity laugh. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, I will say 
this though. Uh, keep going down the iPhone route. I was at UCI visiting an ex-girlfriend of mine, and I found a yellow iPhone. Uh, Chinese knockoff, obviously. Uh, what was interesting about the yellow iPhone, though, is that the screen was not something I could read. It was it was the 240 pixels by about three, so it was a line to me, but a full screen to her. <laughs> oh, wow. I tried. I tried using the GPS function on that one as well. It was. It was interesting. It, it didn't give me turn-by-turn -turn directions per se. It was more of a uh, go faster, go slower, weave left, weave right, break. Turn your neon lights on. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, once you do start comparing the four iPhones, both the two legitimate ones. Uh, black and white, and the knockoffs, uh, brown and yellow, you start to notice there's a few differences in their functionality. For example, if you start looking at the GPS and mapping function of Siri or restaurants on the white iPhone, you get a nice uh, fish market or something like that, nice four or five star uh, restaurants on the black iPhone, church's chicken, Popeyes. That's not so bad. We got a lot of options on the brown iPhone. It was Juventus, 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 Juventus. They didn't have enough room on the screen, uh, but on the yellow iPhone, this is what got me. Petco and PetSmart. Alright, in any case, uh, I'll, I'll wrap up with this. Um, it, it's a rough economy uh, these days, and, and there's a few things that stood out uh, recently to me. For example, I was driving down the street and I saw uh, somebody walk up to a guy holding a cardboard sign and, and reach into a paper bag and hand him a bunch of carrots. So that guy said, alright, cool, and he went off to the other corner and sat down. So the guy who had given the guy the carrots pulled out a cardboard sign and just stood there. Uh, so when you're paying for real estate by using carrots just so you can stand on the better corner, you know it's kind of bad. <laughs> but uh, I am lucky to still have a job in this economy. Uh, but if I ever do lose my job, I will uh, just go stand outside of Home Depot. Yes, because I am Latino this time. And uh, the thing is, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to do any manual labor whatsoever. I'm just going to translate all the guys that pull up in the trucks that don't speak Spanish to the guys standing in line for work <laughs> and take a cut. So I'm going to be like a middleman between the labor and the guys with the money, the finance. I guess I'm kind of Jewish on that front, aren't I? <laughs> Alright, that is my time tonight, guys. Have a good one.